All right, so before I start this off, I just want to say sorry for the lack of uploads. It's just, yeah, a lot of final exams. It was like, wow, you know, I just had no time to record. And I was out here living life. I was having fun. You know, it'd be like late midnight or something. And then when it comes to YouTube, I'm just like, dang, like, you know, I haven't recorded nothing. You know, I still got this video like halfway edited. And it's like, I don't even feel like editing that. So that's all that was going on. But now, as you guys can see, a different room and all that. So, yeah, it should be summer vacation right now. Just have as much time to record, edit, do whatever. So I'm going to still take it slow a little bit, but I may do i don't know two three uploads per day i don't even know how much yeah i'm gonna try and just record here but i'm gonna try and catch up with you guys requests and you know starting off with this one here toma versus all level five espers so yeah let's see how this is gonna go and i think i have i think yeah what was it is toma the strongest level five something like that but other than that this may not apply or you know really matter for people watching this later on um, unless it happens again which most likely will yeah, because when I say I was living life, I was like, finally, you know, I was always studying and stuff. And it's like finally getting some fun at the end of the year. You know, I don't know why it got to be the end of the year, but whatever. But other than that, hope you guys will enjoy this. Make sure you like, subscribe, and you yeah, guys get this reaction started. I noticed a lot of people in the comments of my level 5 Espers Ranked video, link in the description, that Toma would easily beat all of the level 5s or something like that. But how true is that exactly? Let's see. Is Toma that OP that he can defeat the top seven espers in Academy City? Or is that largely exaggerated because he's the Toma? Let's find out. Now to clarify, this ain't gonna be Toma versus all the level fives at once. As let's face it, without the dragons, he's completely fucked. Even with the dragons though, I feel like we haven't seen enough feats of them to suggest he could handle all yeah, so gotta see more. So instead of wasting time discussing that, as cool as it does sound, I will admit, instead we will have Toma taking on the level 5 gauntlet. With Toma going 1v1 through the ranks, starting with the 7th ranked level 5, Sogita Gunha, and ending with the 1st ranked, Accelerator. First to fight the Toe Man is Mr. Guts himself, Sogita. And for a first matchup, this is very difficult for Toma. Although that's mainly due to the fact Sogita doesn't really deserve to be the lowest ranked level 5. Yeah, it's considering like, he's like the third or fourth strongest. Yeah, rank 7, but Toma really higher than that. A very difficult time versus Sogita. As Sogita moves at supersonic speeds, which is a similar description in the novel to how fast Saints move. And both Kanzaki and Aqua blitz the living hell out of Toma. Okay, you could argue that Toma's precognition works well against AIM diffusion fields, which Espers passively emit, which is why he can react to Misaka's attacks. But we all know Sogita doesn't really act like a normal Esper, so I don't know if it's guaranteed to work against him. Now we all know how Toma defeats his enemies by using his head, of course. Which leads to talk no jutsu that Naruto would be impressed by, then leading to a one punch KO. Like, I know Toma is a lot stronger than the average 15 year old Japanese boy, despite what he will have you believe, considering he can beat the shit convincingly out of adults much bigger than him, oversized 14 year olds in Styles case. But I highly doubt this is gonna work versus Sogita. Sogita straight up could tank Misaka's level 6 shift attack. Yeah, slap the lightning down, like. And from literally being shot in the heart. Sogita can regenerate his broken bones and injuries too. I don't think Toma is strong enough to deal major damage to Sogita. Plus, Sogita is way more physically stronger than Toma. I don't think Sogita even has to use his massive area of effect supernatural attacks like his amazing punch to win. Sugita can just fling bits of buildings or rubble at Toma till he wins, so unfortunately for Toma, he is not winning this. However, I don't see Sogita beating Dragon Toma, considering the dragons easily defeated 5.3 Misaka and have a variety of hidden OP abilities that should handle Sogita easily. While it's not stated how fast the dragons move, you could argue that Sogita could just dodge them, but I honestly doubt they are slower than Sogita, plus Sogita has to try and dodge and fight 8 dragons at once. 
Like, I know he has guts and all, but I don't think any amount of guts is going to save him from that. Next up to fight Toma is Ihana Etsu. I mean, how? Five video, you will know that how is Ihana Etsu even going to fight, though? No combat capacity, yeah. As his power isn't suited for fighting, and base Toma defeated him without a sweat. So, yeah, let's waste no more time on this. Toma easily defeats Ihana. Next, we have the Queen of Tokiwadai herself, Shokuho Misaki. I find this matchup one of the more interesting ones, as I feel like there are a lot of factors at play here. But straight up, Shokuho is getting destroyed by the powers beyond the right hand. I feel like the dragons would completely massacre Shokuho, and the invisible thing should Yeah, protect it's her like she just ran out of stamina. Therefore, we are just going to discuss base Terma versus Shokuho. While it may seem that Terma has a big advantage, since Terma can actually fight and Shokuho can't, Shokuho's power indeed does work on Terma. However, whenever she does use it, Terma gets an urge to touch his head with a Magin Breaker, which then negates Shokuho's mind controlling mental art ability. However, I think there is a way for Shokuho to overcome this, but it does involve a spoiler from New Testament 11, so skip here if you want to avoid it. Shokuho was able to damage Toma's brain so that he was not able to form memories of her, and this damage was irreversible, being unable to be reversed by a Magin Breaker or even her own power. While this wasn't done on purpose, Shokuho seems to have the capacity to damage Toma's brain beyond repair. Although this wouldn't be in character for her to do this, she would also have to be in a decent range away from Toma to pull out her controller and then use Mental Out on him. But if Toma is a close starting distance away, then Toma is just going to punch her before she can use it. Overall, I think base Toma wins unless Shokuho is out of character and is willing to do lasting damage to Toma. Up next, we have the 4th rank level 5, Mugano Shizori. This is another case of Dragon's win, as they managed to eat up that ball that was going to destroy both Academy City and more, which outright is more powerful than Mugano's strongest feats. We are going to look instead at base Toma again versus Meltdowner. I feel like Toma definitely has an Get edge those in combos. Due See to his precognition, which I mentioned earlier, and Toma should definitely be able to KO Mugano. And just because Hamazura beat Mugano doesn't necessarily mean Terma will, because they both fight in different ways. For example, if Mugano fires a beam, Terma's instinct would be to negate it with a Magin Breaker most of the time, while this isn't an option to Hamazura, who would choose a different option. But a Magin Breaker definitely gives Terma an edge in this fight. But if Mugano fires one beam and Terma is in the middle of negating it, What's stopping Mugano from firing multiple beams at once? Terma wouldn't be able to defend against them, surely. Similar to the previous matchup, I think range could play a large role, as obviously Mugano has way better range than Terma, so I think Mugano might just have the edge if she is far away enough. But if they are close up, I reckon Terma might have an easy job on his hands. Let me know what you think about this matchup, as I'm not quite sure it's conclusive, and it depends on a variety of factors. Next, we have the classic matchup of Misaka vs. <laughs> yeah, we've Who seen that plenty of times. times. <laughs> yeah. So we have a pretty decent idea about how it would go down. Terma has never really tried in his fights versus Misaka, while she was definitely trying, but not with killing or doing lasting damage to Terma in mind. Yet, if Toma slipped while she was swinging that Iron Sand Chainsaw at him, Toma might have just lost his head. Literally. Toma has been shown to easily brush aside Misaka's attacks, apart from that one time where he was letting himself get hit. And that's combined with the fact he's never tried once to hit Misaka. However, there is definitely something I want to talk about from New Testament 10, so skip here if you've not read it yet. Misaka finally defeats Toma in this volume by reverse torque no jitsuing Toma, grabbing onto his body and shocking him. To defend Toma's L here, Toma again wasn't trying to punch Misaka, and the torque no jitsu was affecting him badly. Cause he was literally challenging the entire world, 
while having billions of years worth of PTSD from the oh, previous yeah, volume. That's, yeah. So cut Terma some slack here. Yeah, you cut him some slack. If Mizuka summoned her kaiju, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking too. What if she did that? Uh... Terma has negated planet busting attacks like when he nulled Fiamma's magic in World War 3. So mm. the size isn't really an issue as long as Terma touches the kaiju and Misaka's iron sand seems to lose its form entirely once it gets hit by a magic breaker, likely the kaiju would just come tumbling down. Overall, I think base Terma beats Misaka 90% of the time. Next up is Kikine vs Terma and oh boy, this is going to be a funny one to discuss. I think some comments from the previous video were convinced Toma can easily handle Kikine, but to be honest, I would have to disagree. Let's first talk about base Toma versus base Kikine. On paper, Toma might have a chance, right? Wait, there's an important detail I forgot. Kikine has wings, and with wings he can fly, or float I guess. Yeah, so, I don't see how the hell Terma is winning this. Yeah, he has to jump like way so up and hit him like... Bullshittery. The dragons change a lot since they have the range to be able to hit flying Kikine. And I don't see Kikine managing to fend off all the eight of them at once. Also, spoilers for New Testament 6. Skip to this in the video. It's a lot of skipping. <laughs> I think Kikine's dark matter form does change a number of things. But the dragons can perhaps nullify the dark matter as they eat it. Kikine does have the dark matter network, which may cause trouble even for Terma's dragons to stop, because as long as Kikine has a bit of dark matter left, he can regenerate. Therefore, eating up every last bit of dark matter will be required to beat him, unless one of the dragon's mind-related abilities can overcome the entire network. Also, I don't think touching one Kikine and negating the Dark Matter network would happen since Toma can't negate the Misaka network from touching a sister, otherwise that would be pretty stupid. I'm inclined to believe that Dark Matter Kikine versus Dragon Toma would end as a tie or inconclusive to be honest, unless we find out in the future that the dragons can do other stuff too. Finally, we have the one everyone has been waiting for. The match up oh yeah, didn't he? Loves yeah, he basically already beat him twice. Sorry, but now I know. Exo yeah, was that Rater like plot? <laughs> every time they have fought. However, there are definitely reasons why Accelerator has lost each time. The first time he was arrogant and had no idea how to take hits or had any experience in fighting a decent opponent. Watch my video for more information. And during the second time, Accelerator was berserk. He was emotionally devastated from nearly killing Misaka worst, and Toma definitely took advantage of that in their fight. Also, skip to this if you want to avoid. Okay, well, yeah, you can put it that way. Not like During strictly plot driven, but you know what I mean. Purpose in order to help Toma. I think it would be great to finally see an experienced and level-headed Accelerator take on Toma, as that would give Accelerator a far better chance of winning. Utilizing his superior speed in the fight, thinking strategically about how to avoid Terma's strikes, and exploiting Terma's obvious weaknesses. If Accelerator follows this plan, then I think he could beat Terma quite convincingly, as I don't see base Terma being able to get close to Accelerator if he plays his cards right. Now let's talk about the Dragons versus Accelerator, which again, I'm sorry, will involve spoilers. You all should just read the novels already. So who would win? Current Accelerator with access to Clipper's knowledge, Alistair's phone, and of course, Platinum Wings, or Terma with his invisible thing and all dragons and maybe add the fish eggs on yeah, the side. Yeah, fish eggs. Honestly, I can see arguments for both sides, but Accelerator has the superior feats currently in the story compared to what the dragons have done. But if we take into account Imagine Breaker's capabilities and feats and scale them to the dragons, then that would make it somewhat even. If Terma can successfully negate Accelerator's galaxy shaking strike, then he should be okay. But I don't know if the dragons would be able to withstand such an attack. I definitely think having access to Alistair's phone really helps Accelerator, 
in this matchup, since he can call upon non-supernatural attacks, such as optical lasers and mimosa, which destroy the target's cells. Although, I don't think some of the abilities the dragons have vectors, like inflicting terror and confusion, thanks to the blind dragon, which would give Accelerator PTSD flashbacks, leaving him open. In conclusion, I'd say Accelerator wins against base Toma if he doesn't act like a complete idiot, but Accelerator would probably lose to Toma's beyond the right hand powers, but I think this matchup is very hard to judge. Let me know what you think about this fight down in the comments. That's it folks, as you can see, the level 5s aren't always easy opponents for Toma to deal with on paper, despite the entire demon zoo he has in his right arm. Do you agree or disagree with any of my takes? Let me know in the comments down below and we can have a civilized discussion about it. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more To Aru content covering the entire Index and Railgun series. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time. That is it for this one. So, yeah, Toma, it, yeah, it just depends. Like, because, yeah, most likely he'll be doing like physical attacks and yeah they could just fly up in the air it's just like pretty much dragons at that point unless you just yeah got got some way to just yeah have some super jump right um yeah jump on the air or something do something so he could fly around as well see that's all and yeah going high yeah if he's already taking like all of this damage and can literally just be fine yeah, it'll be definitely or obviously difficult for like a regular human, despite Toma being, you know, as strong as he is, to um, do enough damage to him. Like, yeah, this is literally level 5.3 Misaka hitting him. Like, yeah, that's definitely like not, not even like times 20 the power of a human. Like, so yeah, it really just depends. Oh, actually, I'll just go on this for, yeah, the accelerator thing. I don't mean, like, yeah, just strictly plot or anything. It just kind of, like, yeah, that second fight, I'm like, okay, wow, this was kind of quick, you know? Like, um, you yeah, know, a little obviously different from the first fight. Yeah, like, you know, two seasons ago. But, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, he, he won. It looked like he just had no difficulty, really. Um, but, yeah, once you, like, put in that whole, yeah, the, um like emotional or like the current state that he is he's in you know with his mind being unstable then yeah that makes sense you know because he actually yeah so that's what i'm gonna start thinking about as well for other fights for other anime um because most yeah most likely yeah because that even got me stuck in my head yeah me looking at other people saying yeah just like this like who versus who it's kind of like yeah was that plot really um and that's what's kind of stuck in my head i know obviously there's certain cases to where you're like emotionally unstable or something um obviously i know a thing with misaka and let's see but i skip too much misaka and toma like you know most of these times they're not even really trying to kill each other it's just and most definitely toma he's not really trying to like hurt her you know maybe you know stop her from fighting or something but yeah they're really not trying to exactly kill each other me suck at all yeah she's really trying to hurt him but like i said not really kill him just you know make him unable to fight you know you know at that point so yeah i definitely know factors like that but i guess yeah the emotionally unstable yeah sometimes i don't think yeah I pay attention too much to that but it just depends on uh what's really going on like yeah talk no jutsu yeah was that yeah was that talk no jutsu used um you know as a factor or something to like weaken them or something yeah it just depends here too now what won't yeah if there's like yeah just nothing at all like no i guess you say conditions or it doesn't depend like it's pretty much you know you put them because they're just fictional characters right you know obviously you know their personality their friends or something so they're not going to try and kill each other but at the same time since they're fi fictional characters it's like you can literally make them like a death battle or something to where it's like okay let's just have them have like literally no emotion you know they're not really interacting with each other they just know like one goal right they need to basically kill the person that's right in front of them right 
so yeah if you actually did that then yeah now we can actually see like an actual fight um but then at the same time it just wouldn't be realistic because it's not in their character um but yeah if you really do want to see like an actual fight then yeah just do it like that make it to where they're trying to kill each other as if they literally have never even met each other um and they just you know hate each other you know yeah just so much hate towards each other something like that um and yeah they're actually like thinking properly like accelerator he's actually thinking properly or something but yeah since that'll be out of character yeah it just won't be for real but other than that yeah i mean yeah most of the time it may just come down to the dragons but other than that i guess i'll be about it and then i think yeah like i said it yeah, was it is toma the strongest level 5 esper yeah i gotta see what he means by that like i guess if toma was a level 5 esper would he be the strongest or um yeah where would he be ranked or something but yeah that should be about it i hope you guys did enjoy this make sure you like subscribe again and y'all just see you guys in the next one